Hey, this is Wolf, still in exile from Armory Terrain, down in the lovely village of Gladstone near Kempsey. No, not Gladstone, Oregon, or Gladstone, Queensland, or any of those other big cities. Just a small, sleepy country town of, what, 500 people? About 500 people. And while I've been here at my parents' place, I've been manufacturing plastic sheets out of soft drink bottles and milk bottle tops. You know, for, I'm going to eventually cut knife blades out of them when I return home to add to my props collection. So of course, me being as mushroom mad as I am, I was challenged to make mushrooms out of the bottle tops. So that's what we're going to do today, or at least try. We're going to attempt two types. Firstly, the, you know, that brand that's not Pepsi, the red lids. Curse, I'm not going to say that brand because maybe one day Pepsi will sponsor me. I work cheap, Pepsi. Um, and then the second attempt will be out of red milk bottle tops. So we'll see how the two different types of plastic melts. So the idea is to make a red sheet and then melt some white bits of plastic onto it and then curve it into a bowl by pushing it into the bowl and pushing it down. So if you want to bring the camera around, we'll have a look at what I've got on the hot plate. So here I have just a sandwich press with some baking paper on it and a collection of those red plastic bottle tops. I'm going to put some more baking paper on top. If you don't, it tends to stick to the sandwich press. Just feed that in like that and close it down. And hopefully that'll melt into a solid type sheet that we can then play with. Okay, here I've pulled the red lids out of the press. I had to wait a minute or two before I could pull the top bit of plastic off because it was all sticky. And now what I'm going to add a little white milk bottle tops from Long Life Milk. That's a So I'm going to scatter these around and then put it back in the press to melt it some more. And hopefully these will melt into it and give us a solid looking piece. Got to make sure they're all the same type of milk bottle tops, so they're the same size. It'd be disastrous if they were a different size. As you can see, I've just put a couple of white bottle tops on there. Might get put one more on just to make me happy. Because, you know, my happiness is important, right? Otherwise, I'll stop making these videos for you guys to laugh at. So I've just put them on like that. Putting the other piece of baking paper back on and pulling it down to melt them. Let us see how it goes. Okay, this is melted a lot. I'm now putting it in the top of the bowl, centering it on the bowl as well as I can, and pressing it down. Except I'm not doing it this way. I'm flipping it over, because if I did it that way, all the swats would be on the inside. Which is not what we're after. Okay, now that I've got it in there, I'm going to use a wet rag to help cool it down a bit and speed up the setting process so it doesn't spring back. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so it's looking a bit like a mushroom. It's a little bit <laughs> super, super hot because, you know, it's just come out of a sandwich press. You might need to leave it in there. How about I just poke down the centre a bit while using the wet rags so I don't burn myself stupid. Hmm. That's working a bit better. It's not a flat top now. Ideally you'd use something like an icing mixing bowl which is round on the bottom, but we don't have access to one of those here so we use what we can. The other option is if you had a cannonball or a shot put, you could put it down and mould it over the top of it. But I think this will work as a rough looking mushroom. And luckily with this wet rag, it's not heating up too quickly. Okay, I'm now going to leave it on there to cool. And as it cools, it'll crinkle and bend and do all sorts of weird stuff. So we'll come back once it's cool and look at exploring what needs to happen next. Okay, so I've tried the soft drink bottle tops. Now it's time to try the milk bottle tops. I am adding the white ones into it as I go just to see what happens because it's all an experiment. So here we go. It should only take two or three minutes to melt them down. Okay, the sandwich press has been closed down for three or four minutes, maybe even five. 
So let's open it up and oh yeah, this is ready. Ready, ready, ready. Now this is hot. Hot, 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 hot. So what I'm gonna do is just pull it out and flip it over and sit it on top of the bowl for a couple of seconds just until it's cool enough that I might be able to deal with it. Okay, do we have this in focus? Mm -hmm. And let's see what happens when I press this one down. I'm just going to use the pointy end this time. Pull it down into it. Oh, this is much softer. More than anything, I think it's the paper that's giving me hassles. I think I'll swap the stick for the wet rag and just push it in by hand and hopefully not burn myself too much. This way I can push it out towards the sides of the bowl a bit. Oh yeah, stainless steel bowl, it's heating up really fast, so don't grab the outside of your bowl with bare hands. Also perhaps, with my greaseproof paper, I need to cut it into a big circle first, so when it pushes into the bowl, it doesn't do all the creasing up like this. So if I do a third one before I leave, I'll cut it into a circle before I put it on the hot plate. Actually, I'll melt it, pull it off, cool it, then I'll cut it into a circle and then reheat it. There's nothing like double and triple handling. Okay, that's, yeah, that's looking okay. We might let this sit and cool for a bit and I'll come back when it's cool enough to actually handle. Right then, I have some mushroom caps. Cool. Now what? I need a stem. So my mother's luck kindly is the word, kindly donated this plastic, maybe acrylic garden stake. But it just looks silly like that. So I've melted some white bottle tops, which I'm about to pull out. I'm going to try and roll them around the stake. This will either work well or I'll have to bleep everything as I burn myself continuously. Okay, so let's peel it away. And we use that piece. Let's put the blunt end at the top. Stick it in. <laughs> How am I going to do this? I'm going to do it like that, I think. Also, this is hot, would you believe? What I can't do is get this stuck in it, because that would be terrible. Oh yeah, it looks like I can roll it. This would be easier with gloves, but so be it. It seems to be working. Just don't touch the plastic, Wolfie. Don't touch the plastic. It's hot, 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 hot. Okay, go close that in. And it's the top. Let's crimp that over. Can if you can see, I'm just mm -hmm. pushing it in. Hot. To hopefully have a bit of a bigger surface area to attach to the cap. So. It, it looks like it could work like this, especially if I've got some um, decent gloves to roll it with. Is that, that looks like a stalk, right? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's about the right thickness for a mushroom. Oh, perfect. So my next step is to open up the sandwich press and stick it down like this on it to heat up the end. We'll put that but I'm going to put the grease paper on first because otherwise it'll all melt to the thing and that would be really bad. And with the cap, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun to heat, warm up the inside and then press them together. And hopefully that'll stick. I'm not going to film this though because it could be a bit dicey. It might take two or three attempts even. But if it works, I'll come back and show you. Otherwise, it's going to get glue. So much glue. Well, gentle watcher, the question was, could I turn some bottle caps into a mushroom? The question is, uh, the answer to that question is, of course I can. I can turn anything into a mushroom. We should know that by now. Um, so as a first rough prototype, it's not too bad. 
It could maybe use a few more spots and it's got some holes in it. But it worked and it melted together okay just using the heat gun, which was fantastic. And I can buy metal spikes with plastic coverings from Bunnings and cut them in half. And they're worth about three to four dollars each, maybe, maybe a bit less. Who knows? I've got a whole bunch of them at home in my garden anyway. And attached mushrooms to them. So all I've done with this one is trimmed it up a little bit with a pair of cut awls. That that's my word for it. They're actual left, right, and center cutters you know, depending on the handle, just to level it out a little bit. But you can leave it as rough as you like, or trim it perfectly flat. It's your mushroom if you make one, but this is my mushroom. So this is Wolf being mushroom mad, as usual, saying if you can, go out and make something.